So hey guys, it's Tamara. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for coming back to be with me today. We're going to talk about ways to manage the pathological liar. So we talked on Monday about what pathological lying is. Um, I also um, defined and um, kind of um, further explored their typical pattern of behaviors. And so in this video, I wanna focus on giving you six strategies or tips to make sure that you don't get sucked in by the pathological liar. You know, they have a lot of ways to suck you in um, manipulate you and ultimately destroy you or use you. And so we want to, um, stay away from people like that. And we also want to know how to deal with them when they mysteriously pop up in our lives. Not all pathological liars are easy to spot. So we want to focus on that in today's video. So thank you so much for coming back to my channel for those who are subscribed. And if you're new to my channel and have absolutely no idea who I am, my name is Tamara and I encourage you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. So then that way you can stick around with us and learn and grow and suggest topics. I love getting uh, suggestions from you guys and topics. And if you missed it, I encourage you to go to the community section of my channel and look at the listing of topics that we're going to be covering this month. So let's just go ahead and jump in. When I'm seeing clients who are dealing with pathological liars, the first thing that I encourage them to do is to step back. Okay. If you're too far in to a situation with a pathological liar, you're going to get sucked in emotionally and psychologically. You're also going to get manipulated because you don't have um, the stamina or the strength or the quickness to deal with a manipulative individual who has has studied you and has figured out how you operate. So pathological liars tend to have other personalities, uh, other personality disorders, excuse me, with them. So an example of that would be narcissism or they're a sociopath or they're a dependent personality or their borderline personality. These individuals um, have other behaviors and traits and characteristics that you may not be aware of. And so they've learned how to maneuver people for their benefit. So it's often best to step back because if you're too far in, once again, if you're too far in, you're going to have a hard time figuring out what they're doing. So step back, take a break. Now, the best way to step back is to stop texting, stop emailing, and stop answering their calls so that you can reassess the situation, figure out where you belong, and then take your, your, your approach and your next move. Okay. The next thing is to distance yourself. Now, this is different from stepping back. I don't mean just like distance yourself, like a uh, ghost the person or go MIA. But what I do mean is distance yourself indefinitely, right? So put that, that barrier between the two of you or however many people it is, because what you're going to need to do is slowly back away. When somebody's a pathological liar, they obviously cannot be trusted. So you want to make sure that you identify the pathological liar in your life and then figure out how best to distance yourself. And distancing doesn't mean I'm going to distance myself for a few months and then go back to that person. Distancing means I'm going to distance myself little by little and slowly until I'm completely out of this person's life and I become just a figment of their imagination. All right. So distancing from my book and my definition is slowly stepping back so that you can be completely out of their, their periphery. You want to be nowhere near them. Okay. The next thing is you need proof. You want to make sure that you get proof of your communication with a pathological liar. They do what they do best, which is lie. And so you want to make sure that you have everything you need in case they come back with accusations, in case they come back and try to manipulate you, manipulate you and other people, or try to do what I call triangulate. And triangulation is a term uh, that's mainly utilized in the field of trauma-informed care. Uh, but the whole idea behind triangulation is that there's a victim, a persecutor, and a rescuer. And the victim, who is the person that feels scorned, is going to try to create a triangle between you, somebody who's a rescuer at heart or, or a helper, and, and um, you are going to become the persecutor, the one who's pointing the fingers and creating the problem. So they're going to create that triangle between all of you. And so th the best way to deal with a person like that is to make sure that you have emails that say things that are true. Um, and, and, and you want to make sure that you don't stray too far from the truth, right? Like 
going to a friend and, and sharing information. You want to share exactly what's been said to you by the pathological liar, and you want to make sure that you have email, text exchanges, letters, and otherwise to prove your interaction with that person because pathological liars know how to triangulate and they know how to go behind your back and create drama unnecessarily. So have proof. The next one is you want to witness. If you're going to have a conversation with this pathological liar, always have somebody around with you, right? Don't put yourself in a situation where that liar is going to get a leg up on you. You want to make sure they have somebody always in the background, right? And a, somebody who's going to accompany you to talk to this individual or somebody that's going to hang out with you and you're hanging out with this individual. You always want a witness okay pathological liars are sneaky to say the least you want to also this is number five you want to also be compassionate towards yourself okay it's called self-compassion if you're anything like me, you tend to go inward when things externally are not going well because you, you, you're you you're bent on making sure that everybody feels needed and wanted and respected and loved and cared for. And when things go haywire in that social group, if you're anything like me, you most likely begin to withdraw and isolate because now you're trying to figure out what happened, what went wrong, who did what, what do I need to do to fix this, do I need to fix it, right? So you're just, you're kind of ruminating, right? Sometimes that's healthy. Other times it can become toxic and obsessive. So you want to have self-compassion. Self-compassion is the whole idea that I'm going to be compassionate towards myself because I can't deal with what you're doing to me. So what I'm going to do is make sure that I have self-care. I'm going to put up boundaries, okay? I'm going to be firm. I'm not going to blame myself for this interaction because I tried my best. And um, I know what I deserve and I deserve respect. I deserve boundaries and I deserve for you to acknowledge that I'm a human being. So self-compassion highlights all of those things. Okay. So show yourself some self-compassion and last but not least, you want strategy when dealing with the pathological liar. You don't want to communicate with them as you would other people, other people you can communicate with and say hello and say bye, or, you know, you can say a sentence or two or a paragraph, or you can have a long conversation and nothing comes of it. A pathological liar may take what you say and run it to other people and create a triangle and create uh, uh, um, confusion and chaos. So you want to be able to strategize. And what I mean by strategize is figure out what situation should I talk about with this pathological liar and what situation should I not talk about? What exposure to this person do I need versus what exposure do I not need, right? How do I, how do I not um, feed in to their manipulation, right? How do I block them over there but accept them over here, right? I've, I've had clients come in uh, in the past and they've had siblings who are pathological liars and they found it very hard to, to live with but then at the same time, they still love their siblings, so they needed to strategize, right? One client uh, from, I think it was about maybe five years ago, said to me, Tamara, my, my sister's getting married and she's a pathological liar, so I don't know what to believe, what not to believe. And we came up with a strategy. And our strategy was go to the wedding, but after the wedding, kind of take a step back a little bit, right? Um, funerals. You can you can talk, you can hug, you can connect. But then after that, take a little bit of a step back, right? So that was the strategy. The other strategy that we utilized was um, you can talk to your sister in person, but don't talk to her over text. Because she's going to take those text messages and run them to other people and create chaos, right? Or you can talk to the person on the phone, but don't text them, don't email them, right? So, so you got to have some strategy to protect yourself. Thank you so much for being with me today in this video. If you want to share with other people, please give me a thumbs up and a subscribe. I welcome you to do that. Uh, Friday, we're going to talk about something else. And guess what, guys? We're going to continue with all of our topics that we talked about in the community section. I look forward to continuing this month. I think we have some really cool videos coming up. All right, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.